five. So first boot with Redshift Pi 3.5 and you'll see something that a lot of you have been requesting and I think that you'll really like it. Um, Jules uh, added this part, he's quite a genius. He's actually the one who's done most of Retro Pi's code, so he knows what he's doing. Um, give it a second. Still booting. And look at that, how it resizes the file system automatically. So no longer do you have to do that step from Raspberry config. It just does it automatically. And of course, this is only part of the image itself. It's not um, going to be part of the code, um, like if you were installing it manually. Um, but yeah, you'll also note that there's a lot less boot text and it boots a lot faster because we removed some of that. And there's a, I put a page on the wiki as well showing how to get rid of all the boot text and the raspberries if you want it to be completely quiet. Um, I have another video on it and um, also link to the to the wiki for that. Um, yeah, so that is a good change. And then we'll carry on to the rest of 3.5's new features. So we'll start with some of the improvements on the run command launch menu that shows up before you start a game. So if we just go into uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, see it shows up with the, the more pretty GUI, and it takes a little bit longer too. Um, but that's for a few other reasons. So we'll exit out of that. And then there's also this lovely functionality with here, where if you launch it with box art, the box art will show up, which I think is pretty cool. And then the other thing is it's all configurable now. So if you don't want it, you can remove it or if you've got kids or something and you just don't want them mucking up with the controls, with the, the joystick controls, uh, you can see that it's on the Retropy menu, the very first one, configure run command launch, launch script, select that, and you'll see these options. So you can either enable or disable the run command menu altogether. Uh, you can disable the art and just have it be the GUI. Um, you can just disable the joystick control and leave the art and the launch menu configured um, or you can just disable all of them and um, yeah so that will give you a lot more options to make it a little bit of a cleaner interface um, if you don't like waiting um, that extra second or two um, or if you don't want your kids messing with it if you've built it for your kids and then of course CPU configuration is just um, different ways to optimize um, the CPU when you launch with the script so um, so that's that and then there's a couple new features we added uh, I added an arcade folder so that way you can put all of your ROMs in the same folder and you're not, you don't have to worry too much about which uh, which ROM set to put in what folder and then when you launch it in the run command menu you can just select and then for this specific emulator I want to make sure that it is I don't know, low retro FBA and so we'll launch that one. And then of course you can set a default ROM uh, emulator for all of the um, all of the arcade emulators. So typically I will just go with the main 2003. So if we launch it, it'll launch with um, the Libretro FBA because I set that per ROM and it runs. So that's great. So hopefully that will simplify things a bit, but you still probably will likely have to build, rebuild your ROM sets with ClearMain Pro, um, which is also on the wiki, so um, you can look at that to do that. And then we've also added the ColecoVision. Uh, the emulator is CoolCV. It's developed by Oscar Toledo. He's a, a Mexican developer. He's quite brilliant, really. Um, there's still some bugs to work out with it, um, and he hasn't released the source code, so it's kind of on him to build it. Um, but yeah, so it loads up just fine. Um, it's all keyboard for now. There are there is some support for joypad configurations. In theory, F7 should give you the joypad codes for the cool CV text mapping, but it doesn't work on the Raspberry Pi on this version yet. So hopefully, I'll do an update in the next one. Um, but yeah, so it it does work. It's, it's pretty good. Um, and then you press Shift and Enter to exit. So there's that. And then we added, oh, interesting, I might have accidentally 
I'll end it back up again. Anyways, um, so we've also added the Love Engine, and notably because of the Mario Mario game, um, the, the O is actually zero. Um, it's a mashup between Mario and Portal, which is brilliant. This is one of the best games I've ever played. It's definitely right up there with Super Mario War. Um, and unfortunately, there's only partial gamepad support. You still need the keyboard to navigate through the menu, but it's being worked on, hopefully. So go into options, and then I can change the scale up to five, and that works pretty well. All right, and then you can change the controls to use a gamepad if you want. Um, but I'll just show you really quickly how it works. So you've got mouse here, and it only works on the Raspberry Pi 2, by the way. So, too bad to sad. Yeah, it's fantastic. I really like it. Anyways, um, so there's that game. There's other love games as well that you can add um, that are pretty decent. Um, you'll have to add those manually. And then another thing that we've added is the direct launch. So instead of needing to go, like if you had Kodi as its own, instead of going into two menus to select it, you can launch it directly. So see if I just click Kodi, it'll go right in. And then it loads right up. And then also, if you don't like the uh, CEC utilities, um, when you can use your remote to navigate it, if you don't like that turning your TV off, um, you can change the settings in here under system settings, the settings system, and then input devices, peripherals, and then in there, and then you're going to want to device it to power off during shutdown. Um, none. And then down at the bottom, OK. OK. didn't turn off my TV that time. Great. So that's really cool. And I'll show you in the back end um, how to configure that for any system you want. It really only needs the name and the command launch parameter and then uh, the direct launch um, set to true. So sudo nano etc emulation station. I'm just pressing tab to autocomplete and es systems cfg and then page down page down down to Koei. As you can see, that um, the name is Cody, the command is the Cody standalone, and then direct launch is the next tab tag that is added um, and is set to true. So those are the only three things that you should need, I think, to make it work. Um, you can do that with any system, whether it be LXDE, um, anything really. So. Uh, that's really cool. I thought that was nice. Um, Talus is one who added that into Emulation Station, so I like that one. Um, and then the USB ROM service uh, was fixed, and now it supports NTFS as well. So um, in the past, that people, um, at least in the last few versions, um, there were some issues with Jesse, and it would only transfer maybe like 100 megabytes before it would stop transferring. So hopefully those fixes, um, hopefully that should all be fixed. Now I tested it last night and it should work. Um, so it, that should be basically everything that is new. So hopefully you enjoy the new changes um, and you'll see that it's a lot quieter. There's a lot less Linux text, so it's a little more user friendly for people who maybe aren't as familiar with Linux. Um, not to say that those things are bad, but it's great for um, other stuff. But yeah, so hopefully um, you enjoy the new changes and um, look forward to the feedback we get for this next version. So, thank you.